Today we're going to talk about the importance of copywriting as a creator and why harnessing it will take your business to the next level. I'm Justin Moore. Welcome to Creator Wizard, your step-by-step -step guide to the business of being a creator. In this video, you're going to learn what copywriting is and why you should care as a creator, how to look at your newsletters, your course sales pages, and even your social media captions as part of a unified strategy, and five simple tips for how you can supercharge your content's impact right away. Before we get started, don't forget to click the link in the description to get a downloadable glossary of over 40 influencer marketing buzzwords, acronyms, and lingo that every creator should know. So today we're going to be speaking with Prerna Malik, who runs Content Bistro. She's a certified conversion copywriter who has worked with top creators like Pat Flynn and Vanessa Lau. Welcome, Prerna. Thank you so much, Justin, for inviting me. I'm glad we could make our, you know, like opposite ends of the world schedule to work. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so to start off, can you share uh, your best explanation of what copywriting is and why it should matter to creators and influencers? Absolutely. So there are, you could find as many definitions of copywriting as you want to, like you just have to Google to see that. Um, but how I personally see um, copywriting, especially conversion copywriting, which is what I specialize in, is like writing words that matter and help you make money. So it's not just, oh, I write words that sell, but those words should also have a bit of soul in them. So that is copywriting. When you write words that, that matter to your brand, to your audience, to you, and at the end of the day, they help you make money as well. Interesting. And so, you know, when we're thinking about creators, I mean, especially like creators and influencers or social media influencers who, you know, maybe have spent their entire career creating content for free, right? Um, and they're not really used or, you know, used to or accustomed to being in that mindset of like creating, you know, crafting captions or crafting copy that is, you know, maybe they're used to like selling something on, you know, Amazon or being convincing about doing a, a sponsorship or a brand deal or something like that, but not necessarily like actually writing compelling copy. Maybe a blogger would be like a more traditional blogger is more versed in that type of type of thing. But you know, creators can have so much impact is their authenticity, right? And and they've often, you know, time spent many years building up a following of a, a following of people who trust them, right? So like how would you respond to a creator who might feel that um, copywriting is maybe too intentional, you know, or may, or maybe too much work or like, you know, I got this far, you know, being myself, why do I need to change? So you bring up a very interesting question, especially as someone who works with a lot of influencers and has, you know, um, seen that the impact that it can have. Um, I, I believe that when you either choose to do copywriting or you hire a copywriter, whether you're a creator or an influencer, at the end of the day, your goal is to show up and serve your audience in the best way possible. And that is exactly what a copywriter would help you do. You know, that is what copywriting is, will help you do. Um, the hallmark of a really good conversion copywriter, of a solid conversion copywriter is being able to use um, a cocktail of emotion, empathy, and engagement to encourage your audience to connect, you know, even more deeply with you and convert. Because whether you're a creator, a course creator, a coach, a consultant, an influencer, at the end of the day, chances are you do want your audience to, to you know, resonate with you. You want your audience to align with you. You want your audience to understand where you're coming from and also you do want your audience to buy from you, to trust you enough to mm -hmm. make a decision they feel really good about. And that is the job of a copywriter. You know, um, copywriting isn't just, this is why I say copywriting isn't just about putting words on a page that sound pretty. It's, it's about thinking about the words that go on the page and thinking about how is it that your audience is going to connect with those words? How is it that your audience is going to feel about those words? And are those words really aligned with who you are? Are those words really, you know, in sync with how you want to show up? Or are you just using them because you heard so-and-so use them, you know, or because you think that that's what's trending right now? That's not what copywriting is. Copywriting is, yes, it is being intentional. And I will talk about that as well, because I feel like it's super important for you to be intentional about the words you 
choose to put out there. But, and yes, copywriting is also a lot of work, but it is work that pays off in the long run. It is work because mm-hmm. your audience starts to see those words that make them go, huh, it's like, you know, he's in my head. Or it's like she's speaking my language. She knows what I'm, ta- what I'm feeling. She knows what I'm going through because you take the time to not just sh- share what you believe in or not just you know talk about what you want for your audience, but also about you take the time to really understand what they're going through. You take the time to use words and use language and use, you know, even pop culture references that they would, you know, that, that would make them go, huh, this is my person. <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and, you know, I must admit, I did, um, you know, I, I went down a rabbit hole looking through your website and a, and a, lot, and a lot of the, you know, uh, products that you offer and courses and things like that. And one of the things that really struck me um, was that of how much you talk about research uh, when it comes to copywriting and how critical that is, especially if like, let's say a creator already has an established community um, that you're able to go in there and just kind of like get really deep in the weeds of like understanding, okay, what types of words are they using? Or like, even you know how like those like word clouds where it's like you figure out like how often are they saying which words and then, you know, utilizing those words. And, and in fact, it sounds like, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you you may be ab- able to actually even deepen your relationship with your audience because you're able to connect with them uh, on a much uh, on, on a better level or a more fundamental, more visceral level than you may have previously. Absolutely right. You know, uh, research is a huge part of my um, copywriting process and it forms the very foundation of every, you know, of every headline, of every call to action, of, of course, you know, the, the copy itself that goes on a page or in an email. Um, and, and yes, you know, when you start to write copy that your audience starts to connect with and that your audience starts to get, feel um, that you're writing for them and you're talking with them instead of at them, naturally, you know, that connection deepens. It's, it's a very organic process. And I'm, you know, I'm glad you brought up this, the deepening of the connection part, because that, that's exactly why my proprietary framework for writing copy is called the connection conversion framework. Um, It starts with connection and it ends with connection. Yes, there's, you know, there are different stages in between, but at the end of the day, connection is where, you know, it's all about because you're not dealing with subscribers, you're not dealing with leads, you're not dealing with, you know, sales, you're not dealing with customers and clients, you're dealing with humans. When you're forming that relationship, when you're forming that connection, you're connecting with a fellow human. So yes, maybe those metrics are important. And as a conversion copywriter, I'm always and all about the, you know, the conversion metrics. In fact, like just recently, a client of ours um, messaged me on Instagram saying that her webinar registration page is converting at 97% and her funnel is converting at 12%, which is amazing. And I love that. Uh, But a huge part of that is, is, you know, being able to connect with your audience. So So they feel then compelled and encouraged that they're making the right decision, even if it's for something as simple as signing up for a webinar. Right, right. Interesting. And so, like, what types of, of, like, content should creators be thinking about copywriting for, right? I mean, because I think a lot of people think about copywriting for, like, maybe a course, right, or something like that's the most, like, common thing that I think a sales page or something, right? Um, But... If you think about a, a, a normal brand, right, like they have brand guidelines, right? Like they have unified messaging mm. across all of their marketing initiatives, whether it's print or digital or TV or like their web presence, right? Mm. It's like it's a unified strategy. So they're speaking with a, a singular brand voice, right? And so how can creators, you know, steal that, you know, that idea? Because to be to be fair, like if, if a follower or potential customer is going to be following you and checking you out, doing their own research before they purchase something from you, checking out your Instagram, checking out your course page, checking out whatever it is, your ebook, right? Um, You do want to have some sort of a cohesive voice across all of those things, right? So can you talk a little bit about how should creators think about having a unified strategy across their newsletters and their, even their social media captions and things like that? Absolutely. All of these things are part of, you know, um, and need to come into play when you're when you're thinking about uh, writing copy because copy isn't just um, 
your sales page or your website homepage or your you know like sales emails yes those are uh, you know key elements of copy that would um, make you money almost you know like in almost instantly to speak of especially when it comes to launches but when you look at long-term business building when you look at long-term relationship building you need to keep in mind that you know every element of content that you're putting out, whether it's newsletters, whether it's, like you said, social media captions, whether it's, you know, um, if you're a YouTube creator, whether it's a YouTube script, you know, you need to sound the same. There needs to be what we copywriters call message match. It shouldn't be like, you know, um, I hear you on YouTube and you sound, you know, really friendly and casual and chatty and, you know, like, like my, you know, like the my BFF next door, but when I sign up to your emails, they're all very, you know, like very short to the point, very, you know, CEO like, and, and here I'm wondering, huh, <laughs> okay, there's a disconnect somewhere. And when there's a disconnect that automatically like kind of, you know, raises red flags in the human brain, because then you feel like, how do I know which one's real? <laughs> so that is why it's super important for, um, for you as a creator and influencer to ensure there's cohesion in the way you're showing up and the way you're talking and the way you're, you know, um, in the way you're writing and, or in the way you're speaking, there needs to be, you know, message match. Um, the second thing is it's really important for you to be intentional about everything. And I, you know, like I talked about intentionality. Intentionality is a huge part of, of, how we do business at Content Based My Husband and I, we run our business together and we are, you know, like super intentional about not just um, how we are growing the business, but also, you know, how we show up and serve clients or about how we write or about how we, you know, like even with our life, like what, how are you, you know, making decisions about what to consume or what to ignore and all of those things. Mm -hmm. So intentionality in everything is key when it comes to creating, you know, like a cohesive brand voice or a you know or in fact like when writing copy that you know will will be consistent across platforms regardless of where you're sharing them for instance you know let me give you an example about intentionality values for example you know business values are um are very heavily used in the online marketing space you know what are your values what's your vision but here's the thing you know like your values aren't just buzzwords or or fancy quotes for your wall or Instagram feed. Your values are meant to show up in the copy that you write, in the words that you share on social. Um, so let's say your value is transparency, right? And you, you know, you're like, oh, our business value is transparency. It's on your homepage. So you feel like job is done. But then in your emails, you don't disclose an affiliate relationship with someone. Mm -hmm. So you're not really living your value, right? Forget the fact that you're, you've got like an email list or you've got subscribers or you've got, you know, um, fans and followers. At the end of the day, you're, you're dealing with humans <laughs> and humans are smart. <laughs> so people are, being, are going to see through the, the facade. So if you say your value is transparency, be transparent in your copy whether it's for a newsletter, whether it's for a social, social media status update. Um, yeah, just kind of live the things you talk about. I could go on, you know, like with more examples, like say you say, uh, oh, I'm a coach and I'm all about results. But then when you check out your website, all you see are, you know, stories about, oh, she was great. And it was, you know, it was a wonderful program, but there are no real results, you know, Either you're not doing a good job of collecting those testimonials and case studies, or you know your programs aren't really showing the results that you would you're promising. Where again, there's a disconnect. What so I think one one question that I have is that I think a lot of creators feel like when they when they start to sell something, when they transition from like you know giving everything away to you know content away for free to starting to sell something, um, maybe they're their you know, authentic voice is very casual, right? And now mm -hmm. when they're saying, okay, well, now I got I to gotta convince someone to buy something from me, I need to be much more buttoned up, right? I need to be much more yeah. professional. Like, do, what, are you, what are your thoughts on being casual in sales copy and, and, th and just like having that alignment, like you mentioned, with, with the voice that everyone is used to hearing from you? Here, here's like a 
quick exercise to do. Like when you're writing that sales email, just think that you're writing to a friend. You know, you're really excited about this offer you've created. How would you show up? How would you, you know, what would you tell them? What would you want them to know? That, that tells you, you know, like, oh, this is how I need to show up. And there is absolutely no reason for you to play someone else in order to encourage your audience to make a, an informed decision. You don't need to, you know, play a role. You don't need to play a part. You need to be yourself. And we found this with across the platform for clients, whether it was Pat Flynn, whether it's Vanessa Lau, like Vanessa's style is very different from Pat's. And, you know, she is, you know, very, you know, she's no BS and, you know, she's very to the point and gives great value. Um, and, but she also has, you know, like her personality includes like lots of her brand voice includes lots of interesting gifs and you know um her own presence so we could you know like really incorporate all of that pat's is, pat's audience is very different and also um even though there may be some overlap but his style is very different so you know you need to keep that in mind um mm -hmm. but it's consistent and i'm sure it's the same for you you know you would you would want to show up in a way that that feels good to you because you know that that's that's who you are so when you're kind of starting out or when you're doing this for the first time and you want to, you know, you want to keep that, keep the consistency in how you're sounding, I would say, you know, like just kind of trust your gut and believe that you're speaking to another human. Super interesting. Yeah, I'm, I, I get the feeling just as I listen to you more and more, I just feel like, man, there is so much to know about copywriting that I'm just like l literally over like over my head, um, <laughs> you know, but with with so much of this stuff, but that, that speaks to why, um, how impactful it can be, um, you know, because I, I know that this, there's just this whole industry of, you know, of, of, you know, of what you do and, and the power that it can have in terms of drastically increasing conversions and things like that. So um, I, I was wondering if we could talk like tactics, like specific tactics, like maybe if you could outline three to five, maybe tips or simple like tweaks or changes that creators uh, can make to the content that they're creating to have like a meaningful impact right away. So I think one of the quickest things that you could start to do is be clear in, in your offer. Like clarity is way better than sounding cute or clever. So when in doubt, always choose clarity. I would, you know, go as so far as to say, like, if there's like just one thing you would do is to go through your emails and your sales page and just remove things that, that are vague or are fluffy or are, you know, um, or just kind of make people go, huh, what, is, what would this mean? And if you would never use a word in real life, don't put it in an email. <laughs> so, you know, like talk, hmm. if you talk in a certain way, write in pretty much the same way. Um, clarity is super important. Um, that's like the easiest fix for you to do is like do a quick run through of your sales page or emails and go through it and go and make, you know, just kind of see what's, you know, not, not clear enough, not, you know, crisp enough, not tight enough, and just go ahead and remove that. A great tool to use for that is the Hemingway app. You could just put your text into the, um, into the tool. It'll tell you, you know, what readability level. It'll also point out, you know, any typos and any ways you could, you know, make your writing stronger and, you know, clearer, use easier to understand words and all of that. Um, the other element that I would, I feel is super important, but often ignored is trust. Adding trust to your copy goes a long way. And again, this is true for whether you're getting people to sign up for your opt-in, your webinar, you, or people, you want people to buy from you, whether this is, or it's like, you know, a social media caption. It's super easy for you to use trust in everything you write. For instance, this could be like, um, let's say it's for your opt-in page. One of the things that we usually do for our clients' opt-in pages, which is also why, you know, they convert better, way better with, uh, you know, even with cold audiences is including, you know, um, social proof for their free content. So if you have a webinar and, you know, that you've been running before and you're collecting leads, 
maybe grab some screenshots and put it there. If it's for a paid offer, of course, social proof goes there without saying, but let's say it's a brand new offer and you don't have social proof for this freebie or for you know this offer, then if you've got endorsements from say a coach or a one-on-one -on -one client. But again, I would always say to be fully transparent about where that endorsement's coming from. Or you're in a situation like uh, someone asked me the other day that I'm a, I'm a therapist and if I would use my client's names and testimonials, my license would get taken away. So how do I tackle social proof? Mm. In that case, well, what I told her is like what I tell your audience, if like you're really new or if you're in a situation where you can't use client testimonials for some reason, use, you know, use your standing. Talk about how, how are you qualified to teach what you're teaching. Use, um, you know, use statistics. Statistics are great for your industry. You could show, you know, how the method that you're using or the techniques that you're teaching have a, a you know, have a higher return on investment or have a better, you know, results outcome or if you've got studies. And then the third is, of course, studies as well. If you've got studies that could, you know, back up whatever you're saying this is a this is great if for if you're in the health and wellness niche uh if you can find studies to kind of back up the the claims you're making again you want to be in line with you know you need to keep in mind legal implement implications another great way to create trust in fact i could go on about this so <laughs> is um, <laughs> i love you, it you know risk reversal so you could use risk reversal in your programs, in your services with either a guarantee or, you know, a, a trial period for say, you know, um, if you've got a membership site, maybe offer a $1 trial or even a free trial for say the first 30 days, but let people feel really, really confident about the decision that they're making. Let them know that you stand behind this offer and you are so confident about the results that they'll get that you're willing to take the risk for them. So um, these are like, you know, trust is a great way to, to improve your copy. It's also a very easy way and an effective way because it just removes skepticism from your prospects' minds. Super fascinating, Perna. Um, so if you could make a recommendation to some of our viewers who, you know, they say, well, I'm just trying to grow my following right now, you know, like I don't necessarily have anything to sell yet. Like how can they best incorporate copywriting into their uh, content strategy now so that they set themselves up for the future when they are ready to sell something? First up, if you're not selling anything, it doesn't mean that you don't need solid copywriting. You do need solid copywriting because like I said, the goal is not just to sell. The goal is for you to show your audience your soul, show your audience what you stand for. So copywriting is a great way for you to do that. And for you to start thinking about, you know, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, you're, if whether you're a creator or an influencer, you do have certain goals from this brand that you're building. So what are those goals? If the goal is to say, grow your plot, platform, you know, grow your visibility, then you can use copywriting to t highlight authority, which is another great way to use, uh, you know, uh, principles of both psychology and persuasion and conversion, you know, talk about, talk about what sets you apart, talk about what, again, you know, how are you um, doing and how are you dealing with the issues in your business in a way that's, you know, that's aligned with who you are. So use that for authority, you use copywriting to build your authority. If your goal is to say, um, land brand sponsorships, copywriting can go an excellent way because, you know, you could start showcasing whatever you're doing in your partnerships with brands to talk about, you know, product benefits and where all other influencers may just focus on, you know, superficial features, or you could go a layer deeper and use copywriting to talk about the actual benefits. You could use it to craft compelling headlines that increase, you know, click through rates, for, whether it's for your emails or even, you know, engage or CTAs so that people are clicking through and checking out the brand that you're partnering with. The fact that you're a creator, the fact that you're an influencer means that you do have certain goals in mind. It could, they may not involve hot dollar numbers, but they may involve things like, oh, I want to grow my platform, or I want to be more visible, or I want to be the go to person, you know, like have like speaking gigs booked out, whatever be those goals, you need to like first get clear on them. And then it becomes really easy for you to see how copywriting fits into that. 
Love it. Super, super interesting, Prerna. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. So how can people find out more about Content Bistro or or contact you? I know um, you have some exciting upcoming um, launches coming up. Thanks so much. So the easiest and best way would be to get in touch with us on Instagram at Content Bistro or our website, contentbistro.com. But if you are more interested in learning about um, launch copywriting and writing your sales pages and emails, as well as things like social media captions to promote your products and services and and also get the strategy behind planning launches we'd love to have you join us for um i'm doing a free master class um to share my bake framework as if you haven't guessed already we have a lot of food references at content vistro so um my bake framework walks you through how to you know um launch an evergreen product using smart strategy and of course solid copywriting principles so that would be at contentbistro.com backslash ready to sell masterclass um and yeah we'd love to see you there awesome well we'll, we'll uh, put the link in the description box to uh Pirino's course and to find out more about um content bistro and thank you so much again so i hope you enjoyed the interview it would mean so much to me uh, if you shared this with another creator whom you think uh, this might be helpful uh, and please leave a comment down below if you have any questions or future video ideas and you are one step closer to becoming a creator wizard. Don't forget, if you want insider tips on how to grow your business as a creator and diversify your income, click the link in the description to join our free newsletter. You'll get exclusive videos, worksheets, and insights on the influencer marketing landscape, access to special product discounts, first look at upcoming courses, and more.